Hello, Dr. Weiner here from Orlando, Florida. I recently did a video and wrote an article about physical exams and what they're, what veterinarians are looking for and the true value uh, of a, a good physical exam. I thought a good place to, to take that uh, a little further is to talk about some of the values uh, of a good diagnostic workup. Uh, and by that, I mean just the common or routine uh, diagnostics that you will encounter as a dog owner. So uh, jumping right into that, um, the first uh, one, really the first group, uh, is called the minimum database. And what that is, is it's a group of tests that really gives you a full picture of what's going on in the body. Um, sometimes you use that as just a screening tool, just part of an annual exam, you know, wellness exam. And what that does is kind of gives you a baseline of what's normal for that specific individual, because uh, individual, every individual is different, right? So uh, it gives you a, a baseline for that to compare to when, when if a dog gets sick later on, uh, you can see what their specific individual uh, values have been. And, and that way you can either catch a trend and catch things early, so you can be proactive instead of reactive uh, or if you see that there's something has doubled uh, in value even if it's still within normal limits uh, you can see compared to last year or you know se seven years ago whatever it was you know for that specific individual it is going up and uh, you know maybe some intervention is needed let's start with uh, what makes up a minimum database so that's a complete blood count or CBC a chemistry panel and a urinalysis. So the CBC, the complete blood count, is looking for kind of three primary things. Uh, one is red blood cells, which are the oxygen carrying cells of the body. So is there any signs of anemia um, or um, dehydration? Um, sometimes will show up on, on a red blood cell count. Um, the other thing is white blood cells, which are the immune system of the body. So is there are signs of inflammation uh, that could be infectious, it could be autoimmune, uh, what have you. The other thing is platelets, which are the clouding factors uh, within the blood. Um, are there any signs of um, you know, potential clouding or bleeding issues? So some things that we might be looking for um, if the uh, red blood cell count is low is signs of anemia. So is there blood loss somewhere? Are you hemorrhaging somewhere, either inside or outside the body? Uh, red blood cell destruction. Is there something that's causing the red blood cells to uh, burst or get destroyed within the body? Um, or just chronic disease, um, and which can sometimes happen for, for pets that have been sick for quite a while. Uh, white blood cells we kind of already talked about, like I said, inflammation, uh, which doesn't have to be infection, but it can be. It, other things could be um, just uh, inflammatory like allergic or autoimmune uh, and unfortunately some cancers too can can disrupt the normal white blood cell count. Uh, as far as um, platelets go, uh, some things that can interfere with that, sometimes the platelets clump um, on, uh, within the blood in the sample, uh, so the machine might read it as low, um, but in, in um, retrospect if you actually look at it on a microscope slide uh, you can see that there's adequate uh, platelets. Uh, other things other than artifacts that can make platelets uh, go low um, are some autoimmune diseases and, and some toxins um, or if the body is just using them all up. So uh, as far as the chemistry goes uh, that's where you're looking for liver values, kidney values, proteins, uh, and some macro minerals. So uh, you look for, like I said, your liver values, are they high or low? Any signs of uh, infection, inflammation, um, toxic changes, that sort of thing. Uh, kidneys, uh, same thing. Any signs of uh, kidney values, which can be up actually due to dehydration. Uh, so it's really important to rehydrate them and then reassess, uh, see if those values have gone down at all. Um, protein levels uh, can change either with inflammation, um, malnutrition, proteins can be lost through either the gut or the urine, uh, or, or certainly bleeding as well. Then the macro minerals, uh, that uh, includes electrolytes, so that's uh, potassium, chloride, sodium, uh, calcium, phosphorus, that sort of thing. Um, so you might get an indication of dehydration, you might get loss of some of those due to uh, vomiting, um, there's a lot that goes into that sort of thing. There's some endocrine-related diseases like Addison's that can 
uh, disrupt the uh, normal uh, ratio of some of those, uh, specifically uh, sodium and potassium. Uh, that can um, indicate that there might be uh, a problem going on. Um, but not always, there are uh, some diseases that don't read the textbook, um, like atypical asins, you might not see a uh, uh, disruption or disturbance in those values. So it's important to, to you know, read the whole picture, uh, not just that specific one. Uh, as far as the urinalysis, there's a lot of information that goes into a, a urinalysis, or that you get from a urinalysis, I should say. Uh, one is you see how concentrated the urine is, so that helps determine is the pet dehydrated, uh, how well are the kidneys working uh, in the face of dehydration, or just in general, how well, well are they working. Um, it gives you the pH of the urine, so is it uh, overly uh, basic uh, or, or too acidic. Um, and then it looks for other things like signs of urinary tract infection, kidney disease, crystals or stones, uh, protein loss. Um, there could be a lot of urine uh, sugar, uh, which might indicate diabetes, uh, which is another thing that might be in the uh, blood sugar, the chemistry, which I left out was, is uh, blood sugar. That could certainly be an indication of either just stress, if it's not that high, or, or diabetes. Now, um, so you get a lot of information from, from all those. So just to kind of um, recap, uh, the minimum database includes the complete blood count, or CBC, looking at red blood cells, the oxygen carrying cells of the body, uh, white blood cells, the immune system of the body, and platelets. Uh, the uh, minimum database includes the chemistry, looking at blood sugar, liver values, kidney values, proteins, um, and some minerals. Uh, and then the urinalysis, like I said, you get a lot of really good information from that too. Now other tests that you might um, encompass or you might be encountered with as a pet owner are uh, fecal samples. So. Uh, fecal samples are unnecessary because sometimes dogs get GI parasites. So that's your hookworms, your whipworms, roundworms, tapeworms uh, are the common ones. And then uh, sometimes you'll see uh, little um, single celled protozoan organisms like Giardia or Coccidia. Uh, there's some other ones, but those are really the more common things that you might see. Uh, those certainly can um, cause some disease in dogs. It can be zoonotic. Sometimes we can get some of those as well. So knowing that dog is positive uh, will helps us determine uh, which medication would be best as far as deworming goes, because not all dewormers help with all of those parasites. Um, sometimes you need a specific one. Uh, and also helps determine you know, how to go about uh, preventing them uh, from spreading to either other dogs or people. Uh, another test that you might commonly see is a uh, heartworm test. Now heartworms are transmitted by mosquitoes, uh, which depending on your location, you know, here in Florida, mosquitoes are year round in Florida. Uh, but even when I was in New York, we still recommended heartworm prevention year round, uh, just so there weren't any breaks in coverage as the temperature kind of fluctuated. Uh, it's important just to be on the safe side, no breaks in the coverage, year round protection uh, on preventions. Um, the thing with the heartworm test is it takes uh, six months from uh, the time the dog is infected or bitten by an infected mosquito to show up positive on a test. So typically we don't even test puppies because they haven't been alive long enough to show up positive. So that's why in puppies we start preventions uh, between you know, six and eight weeks of, eight, uh, of age um, and then once a month after that. Uh, typically we'll give one dose at a time as they're growing since most of these uh, products are, are based on weight. Um, once they turn a year, uh, that's when they start getting tested once a year as long as the prevention is consistent. Um, depending on the hospital's policy, if there's a break of coverage in, you know, let's say over two months or so, uh, your vet might recommend or require that you get another heartworm test, uh, even though it hasn't been a year yet since the last one, uh, get another test just to make sure we're negative um, before we start those preventions again, just to be on the safe side. Uh, sometimes you, it can actually be dangerous uh, giving preventions uh, while they're positive uh, without us knowing. So we're not taking all the proper precautions and uh, treatment for a positive dog. Uh, the other thing, uh, the other test that sometimes coincides with those heartworm tests are um, some tick-borne diseases. So 
Uh, there's one common test that tests for heartworms, which again are mosquito-borne, uh, but includes three or four other um, tick-borne diseases called uh, Lyme disease, Ehrlichia, and Anaplasma. And there's a couple different strains within those. Um, it's important to note that um, if there's a, a positive, that just means that there's exposure to uh, one of those uh, or some of those agents. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that the dog has the disease. So sometimes, um, depending on uh, the area, the risk of exposure um, and all that, clinical signs that are present or not present, uh, your vet might just recommend starting uh, some uh, antibiotic um, and then testing, or some might test and do a further test or a uh, quantitative test to see if there is a uh, true infection and then not treat until uh, you have that true infection. So that kind of depends on uh, the comfort level of that veterinarian. Uh, the last test that we'll talk about that's pretty common is thyroid. Um, the thyroid, the screening thyroid that is most commonly uh, seen in just routine veterinary medicine is called a total T4. Uh, that is a thyroid hormone that's tested, um, often included in just routine uh, wellness blood work. Um, that is uh, important because uh, as dogs get older, sometimes they become hypothyroid, meaning a low um, acting uh, or under acting thyroid uh, and that can make dogs have some clinical signs including uh, decreased energy level, weight gain, maybe you'll see some uh, alopecia or uh, hair loss or uh, balding or something like that due to some of the hormonal changes. So uh, it's important to know that can um, really affect lots of other organ systems but uh, we're not really going to get into that right now. So those are the most common routine uh, diagnostic tests that you might encounter as a uh, dog owner. Uh, if you have any questions about any of those tests, either uh, why they're being recommended or what the uh, interpretation um, means or what the results mean, uh, definitely feel free to talk to your veterinarian about that. I'm sure they'll be able to clear that up uh, just fine for you. So uh, there's a lot that goes into um, interpreting these values. It's not just you know, you print it, uh, print out an answer and, and you have your diagnostics. Sometimes um, these tests are uh, supportive of or consistent with the disease, but more testing is needed uh, to get your definitive diagnosis. Some things you can't get uh, definitive diagnosis for with just this min minimum database. Uh, some things you need to do uh, a little bit more uh, exploring and to get your, your final answer. If you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to call your veterinarian. I'm sure they'll be happy to explain things for you and uh, answer all of your questions. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks for listening. Uh, talk to you next time. Bye-bye.